a beautiful ballroom scene with our gang smiling happily. Beatrice's cuteness overloading the screen, but a ton of content and no suspense built for the next season? Season 2 of ReZero comes to an end, and if we're being honest, we've got some mixed feelings about this conclusion. But before we get into this week's ReZero episode review and analysis, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button to Detective Anime for some more episode breakdowns for your favorite shows like ReZero and Attack on Titan. Like if you enjoyed this video, and comment what your favorite part of the episode was. Also, don't forget to sign up for our one month free Crunchyroll subscription giveaway. All you need to do is go to our last Attack on Titan episode breakdown, like, comment, and subscribe on the topic at the end of the video, and you'll be entered to win. We appreciate your support. The episode started off with Subaru and Beatrice coming to the rescue of Amelia and the residents of the sanctuary. The dynamic duo gave us a whole new look to their relationship as Betty finally called Subaru by his name, in adorable fashion might we add, slightly opening up the door to a new potential best girl in the future. Well, just until Rem wakes up. The team knew taking down the Great Rabbit was going to be a challenge. As Echidna explained, it would be like trying to evaporate each raindrop as they fall from the sky simultaneously. But it seems like there might be some disconnect in terms of how troublesome the horrifying rabbits would be, because Beatrice and Subaru had the perfect plan. An interesting conversation happens right before the battle as Beatrice responds to Subaru saying that the contract was only just signed and it's one of the three great mob beasts. The contractor is a novice and it's been 400 years since I was involved in a battle. I'd call it the perfect handicap. A moment that shows just how far Betty's come as someone who is just begging to die and now smiles at taking on a challenge with Takno Jutsu master Natsuki Subaru. One specific line stands out within this conversation, as Betty says that it's been 400 years since she was involved in a battle, but we never saw her fight either Hector or anyone else in the flashbacks. This raises the question of what battle she's referring to. There's a 400 year past in which she was locked in that library. Had there been another battle before Hector, or are we missing some more important detail about her fight that will come soon? Considering Tape Nagatsuki's track record, there's a more than likely chance that this small reference could hold significant meaning for the future story. Something not specifically stated in the anime is the fact that Beatrice is a master of yin magic, and as she casts spells throughout the fight, we see she can lend some of her powers to Subaru because of their contract. We're not sure how difficult it is to say Minya in the heat of battle, but Subaru was struggling a little too hard for our taste. While the details of the contract weren't mentioned in the anime, in the light novels it's stated that the contract has four main conditions. First, Subaru is prohibited to form a contract with any other spirit. Second, Beatrice cannot restore mana on her own. Third, she cannot use mana from the atmosphere. And fourth, she can only drain mana from Subaru himself. We then get to see Subaru unleash his ultimate weapon, the secret art of running away. As he acts like the number one bait that he is, Amelia shows off her new control of her powers, creating a barrier around the area to trap the Great Rabbit. Beatrice shows off her ultimate attack, Al Shamak, capable of sending something off to another dimension. Al Shamak, a version of Subaru Shamak, is the third progression of the Shamak form, as the strength of spells begins by adding L, Ol, and All before the spell, in that order. While it looks like Beatrice says she sent the great mobbies to another dimension that it can't escape, the eerie last moments as it began to eat itself send a weird shiver down our spine. Why did it start eating itself? Was it out of fear? Did the spell make it react? Or is it to help itself grow stronger in preparation for escape? Something about this 5-10 to 10 minute battle to defeat an enemy of this level has us thinking this won't be the last time we'll be seeing the disgusting mobbies. Also, with the incredible character development coming from Rosewall, this battle seemed like the ultimate opportunity to create an Avengers-esque finale with Rosewall and Betty finally coming together to take down the enemy. It feels like a really missed opportunity in our opinion. We then proceed to see Rosewall and Beatrice standing on top of the body of Echidna being preserved in the tomb. This was such an important moment for us because throughout the season, we had been speculating that this Echidna was an entirely different person, but to our dismay, it was exactly the same face we saw throughout the time in the trials. We're still unable to wrap our heads around why they never showed her face in the flashbacks, but we're certain that one day we'll get the answer. 
We also saw a really heartwarming moment between Rosewall and Beatrice, as he revealed that he's the same person he was 400 years ago, but just perfected the soul transfer technique. This scene was clear to us in the flashbacks, so it kind of feels odd when Beatrice reacts the way she does. We guess since she was stuck in the Forbidden Archives, waiting for that person throughout the last four centuries, she, she just didn't notice. Anyway, we then see a satisfying punch coming from Betty as she whomped the insane Rosewall. An incredibly well-deserved moment coming from our dear Betty, especially considering she was the only person who truly understood what he was going through. Outside the tomb, the first interaction between Subaru and Amelia was destined to deliver after their last love-filled moment. But honestly, no one could have predicted this. There's no doubt in our mind that everyone who saw this scene came out laughing as Amelia thought she was pregnant from Subaru's kiss. The fandom literally jumped for joy in seconds, grabbing their art kit and posting anything baby-related on Reddit within moments. But the happiness was gone as soon as we learned that Puck just couldn't seem to have the talk with poor young Amelia. It really shows just how innocent our dear Amelia is, but more importantly, it shows just how much she cares for Subaru if she was willing to kiss him and take on a baby in this insane world. We also saw Puck making an appearance as a huge snow sculpture in the background. We aren't quite sure who made it in all honesty, but would love to hear your ideas down in the comments section. We then see Garfield, Petra, and Otto giving their all in punching Rosewall as payback to what the lunatic did during the whole arc. Frederico was nice enough to forgive Rosewall, who was lying in the lap of Ram like nothing happened, but Amelia wasn't going to let Rosewall off the hook that easily. The innocent, kind-hearted girl just wanted a sorry from him, and it's a funny moment to see the little childish similarities between her and Garfield. She wants him to apologize because of the meaning of a promise, and the words around them means everything to her. And Garfield showed, even through speaking to the Bowel Hunter, that if someone swears not to pull any of their bad shit again, he'd let them be. Rosewall's apology and curse showed just how serious the crazy magician was. He showed everyone the oath sealed with a curse mark on his chest. Since he lost, that meant he could never do harm to anyone there, or else the curse will eradicate his soul. He never told Subaru, but if he lost, then that would have been there on Subaru instead of Rosewall. An awesome if story could come out of this with the mark being the center of attention, a hopeful read to get in the near future. We also see one of the Ryuzu clones telling Garfield that it was necessary for Shima to do whatever she did to undo the barrier around the sanctuary. But we're left feeling empty in this area. It was clear that we heard Echidna's voice as the barrier was being undone, but there was never an explanation behind its appearance. On top of this, there were so many other moments that were missing from the source materials. First, we were supposed to learn that after using Al Shamak, Beatrice had used all of the mana she accumulated in the last 400 years and is now completely out of mana. This means that she will struggle while using basic spells, but sets us up for some awesome character growth for Subaru and Beatrice as a team. We were also supposed to learn about an important fact from Rosewall, that he had only hired Elsa to kill Beatrice because the Gospel told her so, but he never hired the Beastmaster. These were the exact words, I never asked anyone to kill Frederica or Petra, and had no time to tell them the particulars. I had been following the Gospel's writ, and placed the order before the selection started. And when Subaru asked what that meant, Rosewall replied, Someone other than myself was operating to attack the mansion. This was yet another excellent scene that would have made the season finale so much better. Turning to the knighting ceremony, things were as expected, but it's important to note that Rosewall hasn't stopped being persistent about bringing Echidna back, despite pledging his loyalty towards Amelia in the royal selection. While we respect the work ethic, it's clear this psychopath may not be as much of an ally as we think. Next, we're given to an introduction to a new character, Anne Rose, a distant relative to Rosewall. We don't know if she will play any major role in the upcoming season, but her and the guy with glasses definitely were given a higher budget than the rest of the extras in the crowd. Another odd moment happens in this interaction as Subaru asked Rosewall if the woman in the coffin was his teacher, which means even he didn't recognize Echidna as the same person from his trials. While we got the face reveal earlier, there's clearly something funny going on with Echidna's appearance. 
The episode ended with some subtle flirting between Amelia and Subaru, where he assured Amelia that he will always be there to help her, and won't leave her alone in whatever's about to happen next. The credit scene was also nice to watch, as we saw our main characters enjoying their time after going through hell in Sanctuary, especially Otto, who was passed out at the table after having too much wine. Fortunately, Frederica reached the scene before Garfield could go through the same fate, which shows just how much everyone's changed and how all of their relationships have evolved. Otto doesn't live in fear of Garfield. Garfield cherishes his sister and doesn't fear the outside world. Natsuki, who tried to do everything himself, has matured enough to create this incredible team for Amelia, and Amelia has become a genuine leader, someone who believes in herself as well as the people around her. This season finale may have cut out an incredible moment that would build anticipation for the next season, but it did fulfill all of its goals through the development of the characters we've grown to love. This happy ending doesn't match the ReZero we know, and while we started off frustrated about this, it almost leaves us even more concerned, as now we have a strong affection towards everyone in this show. We've connected, seen them grow both together and individually, but this development in both story and character creates a looming shadow, one that will likely destroy so many of the happy moments the story has built. We're terrified to see what will happen in the next season, but as Studio White Fox has no confirmed news about Season 3's release, it's comforting to enjoy this brief peaceful moment. We hope and pray that there won't be too long of a wait, but, but until then, thank you so much for joining us for all of these ReZero episode breakdowns. It's been a pleasure to make these videos for all of you, and we're excited to work on My Hero Academia starting next week. We'd like to remind you that the channel giveaway is still ongoing, and you can win a free month of Crunchyroll if you like, subscribe, and leave a comment on our last Attack on Titan video. Thanks for watching, and see you this Saturday for My Hero Academia and Attack on Titan's mid-season finale on Sunday. Until then, don't forget to toss us a like, subscribe, and feel free to comment below if we missed anything. Also, check out our ReZero and Attack on Titan playlist for past episodes. Thanks for watching.